for this is our belief. He endured the suffering that should have been ours, the pain that we should have borne. All the while, we thought that his suffering was a punishment sent by God. But because of our sins, he was wounded, beaten because of the evil we did. We are healed by the punishment he suffered, made whole by the blows he received. The plan was that he give himself as an offering for sin, so that he'd see life come from it. Life, life, and more life. So he was crucified, that on that cross he might show the dying out of our old man. And he rose, and in his own life, he might show our new life. Our Lord has written the promise of resurrection, not in books alone, but in every leaf in springtime. Leaf in springtime. Leaf in springtime. 
Hey, good morning and happy Easter. Thanks for being with us here at Faith Family Church. So excited to see all of you. Want to welcome everybody that's watching us online as well. Thanks for tuning in with us this Easter morning. Hey, my name's Noah. This is Sarah. We're on staff here at Faith Family Church. And again, so happy that you're here with us celebrating Easter. And I think we have some special guests in the house. We do. We know today that there are a lot of you here for the very first time at Faith Family. And in fact, we want to let you know that we can consider you a VIP in our house. We are so glad that you're able to spend your Easter Sunday here with us. And so I know that you're, you're standing up right now, but I wanna let you know that in the seat back in front of you, this the chair right in front of you, there's a green card that says VIP. It matches the screens that you see right there. That card is for you if it's your first time here. I wanna invite you anytime during our worship experience, take about 10 seconds, fill that card out, and then after the worship experience, when we dismiss, I wanna invite you to stop by our VIP areas in the foyer. I know it's intimidating when you come to a church that's this big, but I'll tell you what, Faith Family really values relationships. So we would be honored if we could shake your hand, learn your name, and just say thanks for coming. And this morning, in fact, we have a free gift we wanna put into your hand when you take that card back to our VIP area. Yeah, definitely. Actually, let's not even wait till afterwards to give a couple free gifts away. If you're newer to Faith Family Church, maybe you've never been here before, one of the things about our church is we just love to have fun when we get to gather together. We want it to be bright. We want it to be loud. We want to sing. So uh, we just recently released a full-length album that we're really excited about, and we want to give uh, two of these away to some VIPs. So if you're newer to Faith Family Church, somebody brought you, you have to come on your own, just shoot your hand up. We want to get these out to you real quick. We got this guy in the red shirt right on the front row, right here, pays off for being on the front row. She's got somebody over there. Right here, she's got her hand up. Right. Hey, can we welcome all of our VIPs and thank them for being with us this morning? Hey, we're going to go ahead. We're going to do something a little different than what we normally would do with our service structure. We're going to do our offering time right now. So you can remain standing. If you need to sit at this point to fill out an offering envelope, you can do that. But we just think offering time is an opportunity for us to just tell God how thankful we are. You know, uh, we're celebrating Easter where God gave the ultimate gift. We just believe he gave Jesus for us. And uh, when we give of our finances, it's an opportunity for us to honor God and just show God that we're trusting him back. And if you're new to Faith Family Church, you're a VIP, do not feel obligated to give in this at all. This is for those that consider Faith Family Church to be their home. A couple different ways that people can give, though. Why don't you let them know about that? Yeah, so if you want to give by check or cash, there is an offering envelope right there on the seat back in front of you. You can do that. Of course, you can give online through myfaithfamily.com. And if you're watching with us online this morning, there's a giving option right there on the screen. So we encourage you to participate with us. And if you have a smartphone, you can always give by text. It's really simple, easy, and secure. Simply text the amount you want to give to the giving number that you see on the screen right there. If it's your first time using that giving number, we'll shoot you back with a link. It takes just a couple of steps to get that set up and you're good to go. Now, if you'd like to designate your gift to a specific area, text the amount you want to give followed by one of those keywords that you see on the screen. Yeah, definitely. So let's go ahead. Let's pray over our offering and over this morning together. Heavenly Father, we thank you as we celebrate Easter that uh, we believe you gave the ultimate gift. And Father, this morning as we participate in our giving and in our singing, Lord, we just open our hearts up to you. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for being faithful. And Lord, as we give of our finances, we just know you're faithful to meet our needs and continue to increase us so that we can be more of a help and a blessing to the people around us. And Lord, we just lift this morning up to you. Father, as we sing some more, we just pray that you be honored and celebrated in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, the offering buckets are going to go by you, and we're going to continue to sing some more. So join on in with us. Come on, put your hands together this morning. Oh, you're 
was on that hill where the cross towered over all of us as we watched. It was that day in the darkest time where hope shone the brightest. We're all like sheep who've wandered off and gotten lost. We've all done our own thing, gone our own way. And God has piled all our sins, everything we've done wrong, on Him. Who believes what we've heard and seen? Who would have thought God's saving power would look like this? And me, with all my shame, guilt, and brokenness, I stand at the foot of the cross, looking up at a man who begs me to come just as I am. Because in him, all things are made new. Just as I am, Jesus, I come.
such a powerful song with all of that behind it, watching how Jesus took everything and we can come out with new life because of his resurrection. I'm so thankful. Happy Easter to everyone. Thank you so much for coming out to Faith Family today and uh, enjoying Easter Sunday with us. We're thankful that you came out. And uh, I want to just have a word of prayer over you today before we uh, start this time that I'm going to talk. Father, we're just so thankful for Jesus that all over the world today that people are celebrating what he did 2,000 years ago. He said that he would die. He said he'd go into the grave. He said he would come out. And we're so thankful that he came out because of his life, we now have life within us. And we're so grateful for that. Today, Father, I pray over every individual in this place, everyone watching us online, that Lord, today this message, this talk that we're going to give today will impact the hearts of people. And we will walk out of here different than we walked in, that our lives will be changed radically by Jesus. We thank you for that. We're expecting that in this place today. And if you all agree it, everyone shout a nice, loud, amen. Amen. Well, why don't you find someone today real quickly? I'm sure there's someone around that needs a smiling face. Why don't you greet them? Let them know that you're glad to see them. And you can be seated. Again, thanks so much for coming out and being with us this Easter weekend. I want to start off with something funny. I like to always get folks in a good mood before we start preaching. Hopefully this will help you out. It sort of goes right along with Easter. Heard about this pastor, he's in the lobby after church one Sunday and he's greeting all the people out in the lobby. And he saw a man that he hadn't seen in a long time and he pulled him over, you know, and he said, hey, I need to talk to you. And he said, you need to join the army of the Lord. And the guy said, what are you talking about? He said, I'm in the army of the Lord. The pastor said, well, um, how come I only see you Christmas and Easter? And the guy got up real close to him and he whispered and he said, because I'm in the secret service. So now we know why some folks only come, you know, they're in the secret service. So, but we are thankful and grateful that all of you did come out today, this Easter weekend. In fact, I would imagine there's a lot of folks today that are here for the first time or you're visiting this weekend. Could I see a show of hands in it? Anyone here this weekend that you're a visitor uh, this weekend? Someone asked you to come out. This is not normally where you're at on a Sunday. Raise your hand. Thank you so much for coming out. I, I know I, I appreciate it. Our team appreciates it here. And, um, I want to just talk just for a little bit today about some things that I believe keep people away from God. You know, it's Easter weekend. Jesus came. I believe he came. One of the reasons why he did is to close the gap, the distance between mankind and God. And you know, I've been doing this for quite a long time, and I talk to different people all the time, and I have people tell me all the time that, man, I'd be in church, but you know, I feel like God's mad at me, or I feel like I've done too many things that are wrong, you know, and there's this, there's this huge distance they feel between them and God. So this weekend, I want to just talk to you about that, because the distance is real. That's, that's something you really do feel, but it's not really the way that God wants you to be, and it's really not what he feels about you. You might feel like there's this large distance gap between you and God, but that's not the way God sees it. That's not the way God looks at you and says, you know, there's a far distance between you and me. So I want to talk about how we can close that distance and how we can close that gap here this weekend. Because my desire this weekend, I'll just be totally honest with you, our church's main goal and main purpose with people is to reach people that are far or distant from God. So I, I sort of look at it this weekend. There, there's people here today that you're pretty far from God. You, you, you've never... Jesus is not part of your life. You're, you're pretty far from God. And we, we are so glad you came today. And in fact, you're, you're actually welcome here. And, and I want to tell you something that I think is so cool about our church. We're not here to judge you today. You might be here and say, you know what, I'm a Muslim and I'm here in church today. Someone invited me to come. You're in the right place. We're glad you came today to our church. You might be here today and say, Pastor, you know what? I'm actually gay. I'm, I'm gay and I'm in your church today. And you know what we say to you? You are welcome to be in our church today. We are glad that you came out. You might be here and say, Pastor, you know what? I'm here today and I am a prostitute. And you know what? We are glad that you are in the house today. We're not here to judge you. I like this about Jesus. He did not come 
because he hated sinners. He came because he loved sinners. He came because he loved people that were not walking with him. He loved all of us so much that he gave his life for it. So I have some things up here that are going to help me out preach my message this weekend. And I want to start off with this fence that all of you see. And I believe that in some people's relationships with God, they have this wrong concept, this wrong idea. And how many know wrong concepts, wrong ideas, wrong pictures of God can distort your view of God? And I think some people, this is the way they, they look at their relationship with God. They believe there's a fence in between them and God. And they're on one side and God's on the other side. But the problem is, and you know, maybe that wouldn't be as bad if God was right here and you could just talk to him. But the problem is they believe God is far, far, far away. He is distant from them. And they believe that, you know, I'm on this side because I've been a bad person. I'm on this side because, man, if, if, if any of you knew how bad I, I was, you'd, you'd put me on this side and you'd put God on the other side. And you believe he's so far off that you could never get to him. Every time you try to take a step towards God, you do something that, man, I keep on messing up and it just takes me further away from God. In fact, there's a scripture in the New Testament. It's found in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. And it talks about how sometimes those who were afar off from God. So it's actually not an unscriptural thing or a thing that you would think that I feel like I'm far from God. There was a time in all of our lives when we were far from God. But let me tell you why I believe this is completely wrong. This concept, this idea, this picture. Why it's wrong and why it will keep you distant from God. I believe this is wrong because there's a story in the Old Testament about God's original creation. Many of you have heard of it before. Many of you probably read it before. But God created this earth according to what we believe and according to what Scripture says. God created this earth. And when he did, he made mankind. He made Adam and Eve. They're not just some example in the Bible or they're in there just as two characters, but it's really not true. This really did happen. God created Adam and Eve. And God told them, listen, I want to put you in this garden. You can do whatever you want, anytime you want. Have fun. Just do whatever you want. But I don't want you to do this one thing. And he said, I just don't want you to do this one thing. How many here have ever told your kids, you can do whatever you want, you know, but don't do this one thing. And how many here have kids that the one thing they wind up doing is the one thing you ask them not to do? Does anyone have kids like that? How many of you were kids like that? That was me exactly. So, so the deal is Adam and Eve ended up sinning. And here's what they did. They ended up, they ended up saying, you know what? I think I'm going to go hide from God. And they went far away from God and hid. But the scripture says every single day, God would come down to the garden they were living in and he would just talk with them. And that day after they sinned, God came to the garden and he looked for them and he couldn't find them. And why I know this concept right here, God on one side, you're on the other side, but God is distant from you. Why I know this is wrong is because God did something in Genesis before Jesus ever even came. Let me tell you what he did. In Genesis, God went and looked for him. He couldn't find him, so he just went and looked for him. He said, where are you guys at? And he, and he went and looked for him. So you know what God did? God jumped the fence and said, you know what? There is not going to be a fence between me and between you. I'm going to jump the fence, and I'm going to go find you no matter what you've done. So for years, mankind has run from God, run from churches. And I get it why they would run from churches, you know. I get it that if you walk into a church and you look a certain way, church people have to look at you like, well, you don't look like me. You're not dressed like me. You don't talk like me. You don't act like me. And so church people begin to judge people. So I, I get it. We've done our best to train our church. If you've ever been here for any length of time, you know it. We don't judge people for how they look. We don't judge people because they might be a different color of skin or, or they, they might look different than you, talk to you, act different than you. That's not the way God is. Jesus, is. Jesus has come to make all of us colorblind and not just colorblind, but all the things that are different about you, different than I am, doesn't matter. Jesus doesn't care. So here's what God did. God jumped the fence. So why do I know this? This is wrong because there is not a fence separating you and God. The fence is in your life and in your mind, but not in God's mind. God jumped the fence, and he's come after you. That's the kind of God that we serve. So this first concept 
The first thing that we're talking about is distance. We don't want to have a distance between us and God. God doesn't want to have a distance between you and him. But the second concept is this ladder. And this ladder simply represents, you know, our good works. And I call it the good works ladder. You know, it's like all of you in this room know about what the good works ladder is. It works like this. You know what? I came to church on Easter weekend. I'm getting closer to God. I came to church on Christmas weekend. I'm getting closer to God. Oh, I messed up. Well, got to get back down because I messed up and can't go up the good works ladder if I keep on messing up. So, oh man, I was really nice to my wife. I actually bought her something for her birthday. And man, I was really good to my kids and I helped an old lady cross the road, you know, and I'm, I'm just doing good. I'm getting closer to God. I'm gonna someday be able to get to God. But whoops, I messed up. I sinned. I did something wrong. So now I've come down. And here's why I know this concept is wrong. Because the scripture says that you can't get to God by your good works. In fact, let me just read you this scripture because I think it's it's a vital scripture. It's found in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, for by, by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So here, here's why you can't get on the ladder of good works to get to God. Because if you could, how many know there'd be some people sitting right here today that would want to let us know how much better they are than us because they've been doing everything so good and we haven't. And Man, and they really would like to show you how they've gotten up this ladder. Man, I pray longer than you do. I love Jesus more than you do. I read my Bible more than you do. And they've gone up the ladder of good works and you're sort of looking at them thinking, wow, if I could be like them, then I'd be a Christian, but I can't be like them. So I'll never be able to be like them. So I'm not gonna go to church. I'm not gonna be a Christian because I can't climb the ladder like that. I don't know what's with them. They must have something special that they can climb the ladder so well, but I can't do that. I wanna tell you a story about someone, you know, because religion, you know this, right? Religion has made us have the mentality that we have to have good works. God God doesn't intend that at all, but religion has. And I heard this story about a man who, um, he was a a young man at the time, he was like um, in college. And uh, he was serving all these different gods because he came from a background that they believed in all kind of gods. So all the gods that he served made him do different things, you know, so this God, he had to sacrifice this thing, you know, and this God, he had to do this thing, you know, and all these different gods, he had, he had different candles going on in his house, and one day he went to the doctor because he had not been feeling well, and they diagnosed him with cancer and said, you're going to die. There's no hope for you. You'll be dead in this many months, and he went home, and his mom was very sad about it. And basically, he got to the point where he couldn't, he couldn't do anything. He was, he was bedridden. And he's laying in bed, and he starts to call out to all the gods. He had like five of them that he served and honored. And he started calling out their names, and he said, come and save me. Come and save me. I've done good works. I've done everything you've asked me to do. Come and save me. And he went through all five of them, and none of them did anything. And one day he was laying there dying. His, mom, his mom's basically weeping every day. She's sad. Her son, just a college-age student, is dying. And he, he said this out of his mouth. He said, if there is a God up there, I just pray and ask you, come and show me how to die. I don't know how to die. And that day there was a young girl walking down the street. She was a college student. And she came and knocked on the door of their house. And she went to the mom, the mom answered the door and she said, I know this is weird and it's awkward, but I was walking by your house and something inside of me, this love and compassion compelled me to come to your door and just ask you if there's anything I could do for you or anyone that I could pray for. The mom got tears in her eyes and started weeping and said, my college age student son, is right back here in a bedroom. He's going to die. Would you pray with him? She went back. Remember, he cried out and said, if there is a God, just show me how to die. She went back into his room and she prayed for him and he received Jesus Christ as as his Lord and Savior in that room. And that's awesome, right? And, uh, but what's more awesome about it is this. God wound up touching that college student and healed him. And that college student 
that college student became Paul David Yonggi Cho, the pastor of the largest church in the world in South Korea. I think that's one of the most awesome stories. He called out on all of his gods. He did all these works to, man, my God's going to do something because I serve all these gods. But there is one true God. And that true God came and said, listen, you can't do works to get to me. There are no works that you can do to get to me. And I think this is pretty awesome about Jesus. You know, if we look at Jesus, most of the time he never hung out in what we would call a church today. Back then it was called a synagogue. Jesus hung out out in the streets with people most of us would never even hang out with. And when you look at the life of Jesus and you look at what he was like, you know what Jesus said one day? Jesus said this. He said, "Um, I didn't come for those that are healthy. I came for those that are sick. In fact, in Luke's gospel, Jesus literally made this statement, probably scared most people when he said it, but he said this, the son of man's not come, he's come to seek and save that which is lost. In other words, I've not come for those that think they have it all together. I've not come for those that think they're already saved. I've come for people who are lost. And I think today, every one of us have felt lost at some time in our lives. So there are times some of us feel like there's distance. There are times some of us think, you know, if I could just do the right amount of works, I'll get to God. And then lastly, this garbage can. And the garbage can is just sort of like this. My life has become a garbage can. And there are people sitting in this room today that I can guarantee you that you feel like your life has become like a garbage can. In other words, this is how this one works. As I go through life, all these bad things have happened over the years. And the more that's happened, the more that I've done, the more bad choices I've made, I feel like my life has become unattractive. It's like a garbage can. You know as well as I do, most of you today are going to leave church and either go home and have a meal with your family or go maybe to a restaurant. You're going to do something. This isn't going to be in your living room. This isn't going to be around the kitchen table. A garbage can, you know, it's, it's full of junk. It's full of dirt. It's full of garbage. It's full of ashes, all the things that you pile in there. And there are people sitting in this place today that you feel like, that's my life right there. In fact, I preached this same message last night, and a, a young lady came up who was uh, here that they allowed to come from jail last night. And um, one of our girls brought her, and she was here, and she said, I, I have to tell you, that's how my life is right now. This is what I feel my life is like. It's like a garbage can. I've done so many things wrong. I get out of prison, I'm back in prison. She said, I feel like that's me up there. And I told her, you know, I know you heard my sermon because I'm really good at what I do. So I know you heard my sermon. You are not a garbage can. And here's why I told her that. Because God looks beyond your unattractiveness. God looks beyond all the bad things that you've done. And actually, God sees you according to scriptures. I love this scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. This is what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, This means that if anyone who belongs to Christ has become, I don't care who you are, no matter what your background, you become a new person. The old life is gone and a new life has come. And Isaiah, before, before Jesus ever even came, he said, the reason I've come, Isaiah 61, 3, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. And I've got good news for you today. God wants to give you beauty for all the garbage that's in your life. God will make a trade with you. I love this about God. He'll make a trade with you. He'll take your garbage and give you a new life. That's the kind of God that we serve. So listen closely. Here's here's why I know I'm not done yet because I have one last one that I want to show you. We'll, We'll bring it out here in a moment. Here's why I know this is wrong. There is no fence. God jumped the fence. There's no fence keeping you, you know, between you and God. There are no good works that can get you to God. If you're here today and you're like, man, I'm going to do some good works and one day I'll get to God. You don't have to do any works. Jesus did all the works so you don't have to. And you are not a garbage can. God did something the day that Jesus came so that he would take every bit of your life that is full of all the garbage in your life, he would take all of that away and give you a brand new life. But before I go on, and we're not finished yet because I have one last, like the most important point in a moment, but I wanted to show you a video. And this video is about a girl here right at Faith Family Church that had her life dramatically changed. Check this out. My name is Jill Sullivan. I am the Women's Prison Ministry Director at Faith Family Church. Um, I'm a wife. 
I am the mother of three boys, 13, 11, and 9. I do what I do now because um, I have a huge passion for women in prison, knowing how much God loves them. That love stems from uh, 13 years ago, I was incarcerated and um, some people came into jail and told me about Jesus. And when I received him, it completely changed my entire life. So I'm like second, third year in college, started dating a guy that uh, was a big drug dealer. Um, before I realized it, I was actually um, pregnant by this guy and he demanded that I should have an abortion and he took me to the abortion clinic and actually told me that I was having an abortion or he was gonna kill me and paid for it and left. And when they called my name back um, and they did the ultrasound, I looked at the screen and I knew I couldn't do it. And I decided I couldn't have an abortion. And I walked out knowing that it was gonna be really scary when I told him I didn't, but I just knew there was something on the inside of me telling me not to do it. Before I found out I was pregnant, we were doing lots of illegal things. And so I was in the process of going to court and I ended up in getting sentenced to prison for what I had done. I'm standing before this judge and she's like, you've ruined your life and the life of your unborn child. And I remember those words rolling through my mind. Like I really literally felt like my life is over. After I had my baby, I was in the hospital room and I'm shackled to a bed. So I got to, I decided I wasn't gonna sleep because I wanted to spend a lot of time with him. So I got to spend like 36 hours with him and then um, my parents came to the hospital and picked him up, which was awesome that they took him and agreed to do that because we didn't have that great of a relationship, but I didn't get to see him for 10 months. So that was really hard. 98% of women that are incarcerated that have babies, their children go into foster care and they never see their kids again. So I would just get up every day and just thank God that Bailey was safe and that, you know, he was having a good life and that I would thank God every day. I'm like, he's gonna know me. This is gonna go well when I come home. So when I received Jesus, the day that I raised my hand to receive Jesus, I really had no idea what that really meant. But I thought, hey, this sounds awesome. I need this. So I did, and it literally felt like a million bricks lifted up off my chest. It felt like for, for the first time in my life that I was actually like free. And that sounds really weird to go to jail to get free. But it literally felt like just this freedom of like, now I can be who I am instead of feeling like so, I just felt like so condemned and in this box of failure. But for some reason, God had given me this ability to, for my circumstances to just, it, they didn't matter anymore. Like with him, things were gonna be okay. If I could tell someone in a really hard place right now, I would tell them that with Jesus, all things are possible. You might not know exactly the way God's gonna work it out for you, but he's gonna work it out. And he has an amazing plan and an awesome future that's so bright. And all he wants you to do is believe. What an awesome story. You know, I, what I like about um, Jill, is she's an active member here at Faith Family along with her husband. They own a couple restaurants here in town and God has completely turned her life around and she goes into prisons now. And uh, last night she had several people from prison here at the church. So I, I, I just think she, she had an experience that most people would probably not want to go through, but through that experience, Jesus turned it all around and now uses it for the good of his kingdom where she goes in and helps other people. And I think that's an awesome, awesome thing. All right, I'm not going to take much more of your time, but I want you to just hear this last point. The last thing is this door. And in the scriptures, Jesus said several things about doors. One of the things he said is, I am the door. And I think that's interesting. In John chapter 10, uh, verse 7 and 9, it says, Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, I'm the door of the sheep. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. So he said, I am the door. 
But more than that, in Revelation 3.20, Jesus said this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. Now, the word dine, you know, it sort of sounds crazy. It's like, what's he going to come and have lunch with us today? I mean, what's, what's Jesus going to do? But the word dine in that day literally meant you were getting together for a meal, which literally meant you were going to spend hours together talking, having fun, fellowshipping, you know, connecting with each other. So they heard a different thing. We hear dine, you know, and we're sort of like, what does that really mean? Jesus is simply saying this. He's saying, I'm going to knock at the door of your heart. And all I want you to do is open the door. That's it. And I know you might think that it can't be that easy, but here's what I want to show you. Um, It's this simple if you're here. Because I believe today there are two different categories of people that are here today. There's others, but there are two main categories. There are people in church today that you've never received Christ in your life. You don't understand what that really means, and I'm going to explain it to you as simple as I can. And you think... God would never take me. Jesus would never even want to knock at the door of my heart. There isn't a door of someone's heart that Jesus has ever looked at and thought, I'm not knocking on that door. Not a person. If you're here today and you say, I think I'm the person. I think I'm I'm the person that Jesus will pass right over me. He'll never knock on my door. I want to tell you that's not true. And then there's this group of people that could be here today. You know, if someone came up to you and said, have you ever received Jesus in your life? You would tell them, oh yeah, I did that, you know, back at a camp when I was a kid, you know, or I did it back, you know, 20 years ago. But man, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm so far from God. I'm distant. I'm like that fence example. I, God's way, way far away. But here's what I want to tell you today. Jesus said this. He said, listen, there's a door of your heart, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to knock on the door. And all I want you to do I just want you to open the door. I want you to open the door of your heart. And I want to explain how that looks. Exactly how do you do that? Exactly if you're here today, you say, Pastor, I don't understand that. I don't, what do you mean open the door of my heart? How do I do that? Before we're done today, I believe there are people in this room that all that God's going to do with you today, all he wants to do with you today, is he just wants you to say, I'm going to open the door. And so let me tell you why that's been confusing over the years. We as churches, I'll include myself because I think over the years we did the same thing. We made people think, I'll take you if you become like me. In other words, you can come to this church and you could become someone who follows Christ, but you can't do any of that till you do it our way. You need to talk like us, you need to look like us, and you need to act like us. So you could, you could imagine a person walking into church any given time in any church in America, and they're one of those people that just live out of the box. Their hair's a different color. They've got a body that looks different. You know, they got tattoos all over. They got all this stuff, and they walk into church, and in that church that day, it just happens to be one of those churches where they look at people like that, and they think, please get out of here. We don't want you here. So how would you understand that All Jesus wants from you is you to open the door. He doesn't want you to change any of that. He doesn't want you to get your tattoos removed. He doesn't want you to get your earrings out of your ears. He doesn't want you to change the color of your hair. He doesn't care about any of that. All he cares about is if you hear him do this today on your door of your heart, would you be willing to just say, I think I'm going to open that today. That pastor explained it pretty easily. All I got to do is open the door. That's all I got to do. So let me show you something. And and I know know, uh, many of you here today would understand this concept if you've been part of our church, but others would not. So I want to explain it to you more than anything. What would happen today if you opened the door? So what, what would happen in your life today if you would open the door? Number one, your past will be forgiven. Let me ask you this question. Just want to see how many people here have a past? If you don't raise your hand, you know, we'll pray for you. (laughs) Everybody has a past. I have a past. There's things that I've done in my past. You heard about Jill's past, and you might see her today, and you might say, well, aren't you the girl that, you know, had all this stuff? And 
And she'd look at you and smile and say, that was the old me, there's a new me now. I had a past, but Jesus forgave my past. Not, not the same anymore. Number two, number two, you could have a future. You open that door up, you could have a future that's full of hope. I, I, I wanna do this today. I wanna give you hope that your life doesn't have to remain the way it is and that there's a better life for you. And then number three, I love this one. I, I, I think it's the most important you will have your life of guilt turn into a life of freedom. Anyone here have any guilt? You don't have to raise your hand on this one, but do you have any guilt from things you've done in the past? Every single person has guilt from their past. So before I go on any further, this concept, you know, there is no fence. God jumped the fence, forget the fence. There is no ladder. You can't climb up. Your good works won't ever get you to heaven. And if you came in here today and think, I came to church and I'll get better and by next year I'll, I'll come to church and maybe I'd receive Christ and open that door. No, no, no. And your life is not a garbage can. Everything in your life God sees attractive, not unattractive. And all you have to do today is open this door. So let's talk about how to do that and we'll close. John chapter 3. We've all seen this at football games, right? And if you're watching on TV, you've seen it in the end zone when they're kicking field goals. John 3, 16 says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I like the rest of the verse as it goes on. Verse 17, verse 18. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. Unfortunately, people have been the ones that have condemned each other. Churches have been the one that have condemned people. But God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now watch this. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten son. So what is he saying? He's saying this. If you went to any prison today in Ohio and went and talked to someone, one of the prisoners that's there, they're in prison because they... They robbed a gas station or they robbed a store. They're not in there condemned to death. They're not on death row. They're just in jail. They're going to get out. They don't have a sentence of death on them. But if you went into a prison today and went to death row, you would find someone that on them, they're, they're in this death row deal, they're actually sentenced to death. There is a, there is, they're condemned to death. Well, everybody sitting in this room, everyone watching online, before Jesus came, we were all condemned to a life sentence of death. And he's not talking about dying. He's talking about separation from God. He's talking about not being with Jesus for the rest of your life when you die. He's talking about spiritual death. But Jesus came one day. He died on the cross. He hung on that tree. He went into the grave. He rose from the dead to do one main thing. He did this. He wanted to remove the death sentence that was on me. He wanted to remove the death sentence that was on you. Jesus came to take the death sentence away. So let me tell you this. There's a guy in the Bible, and I want to close with this story. His name is Paul. His first, you know, originally his name was Saul. His name got changed to Paul. He wrote two-thirds of the Bible in the New Testament that you read. So he's a great man. But before he became Paul, his name was Saul. Very, very educated man. He'd be like a Harvard kind of person, you know. Not only was he very educated, but he also understood the scriptures more, uh, more than probably most of us sitting in this room today. Just a very educated guy. But before he accepted Christ in his life, he was killing Christians. He was throwing them in prison. He was holding the coats of others who were killing and stoning Christians. He hated Christians. He thought it was his job to eradicate them off the earth. And one day God got a hold of him. And watch with the Apostle Paul. I say that because I know there's someone sitting in this room that you think, but you don't understand how bad I am. But I have news for you. I don't think there's anyone in this room that had a life that was bad as the Apostle Paul. And I want you to hear what he said. First Timothy chapter one, verse 15, Paul said this. This is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. Now watch what he says. But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst, worst sinners. 
then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. In other words, here's what Paul's saying. I was the worst of sinners. I, I sort of can relate with Paul and my past and things that I did. I, I wasn't a good person. I, I did a lot of bad things. But one day God had mercy on me. And some of you are in the same place today that you've done all this stuff and you feel like I'm a garbage can and I'm sitting here in church today and I've done so many wrong things. And today, right here, if you wanna know what it looks like, it looks like this. Right now, today, Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart. And you say, well, how's he doing that? How does that look? It looks like it does right now. As I'm speaking right now, Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart right now. You might not physically feel it. You might not sense it in any way. But right now, he's knocking on the door of your heart. He's saying there, Mr., Sir, Ma'am, Son, Daughter, whoever you are, I'm knocking right now. You lived 70 years on this earth. You lived 80 years on this earth because I spared your life so that you would be right here today. And as that knock was going on on your heart, that you would listen to this man and just say, all I have to do, all I have to do today is say, I'll let you in. You can come into my life. I'm not gonna keep the door closed. Pastor, you have no idea what my mom did to me. You have no idea what a church did to me. You have no idea what people have done to me. Pastor, you know, I have, I have no idea. But see, Jesus never said anything about those things. He said, I'm gonna come and knock at the door of your heart and it could be in the worst time of your life. It could be in the best time of your life. But I'm going to come and knock at the door of your heart. And all I want you to do is open the door. You say, how does that look? How do I do that? Well, here right now, in a moment, I'm going to give every person an opportunity to open the door of their heart. And the only reason you would not open the door of your heart is because you think your bad life, your sin, your mess-ups, your things you've done, is greater than what Jesus did. And I just have news for you today. There is nothing you've done that is greater than what Jesus did and what his blood paid a price for so there would not be any distance between you and God. So I'm gonna ask everyone just for one moment to close your eyes and to bow your heads just for a moment. I know you might think, well, that's a little weird, it's awkward, don't worry, we're not gonna do anything weird. I just want you to listen to me while I'm talking. Eyes are closed, heads are bowed. If you're here today and say, Pastor, I'm that person. I'm like the fence. I feel like there's a great distance between me and God. Pastor, I'm like the ladder. I've tried to climb the ladder to get to God, but it just doesn't seem like it's working. Pastor, I'm like the garbage can. I feel like my life has become unattractive to God. Why would he want me? And here's what I hear today. I hear Jesus knocking at the door of your heart saying, I love you and I don't care what you've done. And the only reason you've done all those things are wrong is because I've not been in your life. And if you let me come into the door of your heart, things will be different and I'll make you a new person right on the spot. So if you're here today and God, Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart, I wanna give you this opportunity. In a moment, I'm gonna to count to three, and when I do, I'm gonna ask you just to slip your hand up, and that's you opening the door of your heart. That's you saying, okay, I get it, I need it. I need Jesus in my life. Listen, don't care about what anyone around you is doing. Don't care about whether are they raising their hand or not. None of that matters. This is between you and God. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask you, would you like to open the door of your heart and I'll count to three. And when I count to three, I want hands to go up in this place and say, Pastor, it's me. I need to open the door of my heart. I'm not ashamed to do it. And I am so thankful you made it simple enough for me to understand today that all I have to do is open the door. I don't have to do any more than that. He's just asking me to open the door and I'm gonna do it today. So would you do that today? And here's who I'm talking to. If you're here and you've never received Jesus ever in your life, I want you to think about this today and respond today. If you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm actually a Christian, but I, I, would, I would say I'm far from God. I'm, I'm distant from God. 
And today I wanna make it fresh, I wanna make it new. I wanna open that door and get him going back into my life. I don't wanna have the distance that I have. When I count to three, I want you to raise your hand. I want you to be bold. One, today, Jesus says, the scripture says, is the day of salvation. Two, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Three, raise the hands now all over the room. You say, Pastor, that is me. I need God. I need Jesus. Come on, hands are going up. Leave them up real high. Put them up real high in the air. You say, Pastor, that's me. I need Jesus. I need this in my life today. I need him. Hands are going up all over the room. Listen, if your hand is up right now, I want you to do something. If your hand is in the air right now, I want you to do what I call taking a step of faith. And if your hand is in the air right now, I wanna tell you why I'm doing this. Jesus himself said, if you'll confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. And I believe it's important that we just take this step of faith. So if you're here today and your hand is in the air and there are hands all over, I want you to stand to your feet right now. Just stand up. Don't worry about what anyone thinks. Don't worry about what anyone will say. Just want you to stand up. Just stand up all over the room. Just stand up. Come on, stand up. And I'm gonna ask you to take, listen, I'm gonna ask you to take one more step of faith. Listen, we'll only take a couple minutes of your time, but I need to pray with you. And I want you to come right down here. I want you to fill this space up. I want you to come down, meet me down here. Just move down this way. All of you that have your hands up, all of you that stood up, just come down here. Just come down here right now. Come on, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. just one moment of your time. I'm I'm gonna pray with all of these, but before I do, this happens all the time. It happened last night, in fact. There are always people that are sitting out in the congregation after something so wonderful and awesome like this happens. There are always people in the congregation sitting thinking, I wish wish I would've went down there. I wish I would've went up. God's dealing with my heart and I, I should be down there with those people right now. And I wanna just give you one opportunity. We're gonna just take a moment. But I believe there's people right here, right now that you're seated in a seat and you belong here. You belong opening the door of your heart, being bold like these awesome people that they're like, hey, I'm doing this today. It's Easter weekend. We might as well just give Jesus our all. He did everything for us 2,000 years ago. So let's just give it up for him, right? So listen, if you are here, I'm talking to you. I'm talking, I'm talking to that person that while I was talking today, you were staring at me thinking, can this really be true? You were looking at me and thinking, I just can't believe it's this easy that I have to open the door of my heart. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You belong down here. So I'm gonna ask you to do me a favor. I'm gonna ask you to be real bold. There's already some that are already have made their way down while I'm talking, but I want you to stand up right now. If you belong down here, I want you to stand up out there and I want you to make your way right now. I want you to make your way down here. Just come down here. You say, man, I belong down there. I want you to stand up. I want you to come, come on, they're coming. Just come down. You say, man, that's me, I belong. I belong down there. They're coming, thank you so much. Thank you so much for coming. I wanna pray with all of you that are standing here. I don't know if you can clearly hear me if you're still in where the speakers are, all of you that are standing here, but Next week's message that I have, to me, is the continuation of this message, and you must hear this message. So if you can't be here physically, go online and listen to it next week. But I want you to come back next weekend 
and hear this message that I have that will be a continuation of what I believe now you should hear after what you've done today and what all of us heard today is the next step. So while people are still coming, you can come while I'm praying. Would everyone in this place pray along with all of these that are standing here? We're gonna just say a simple prayer. Eyes are closed just for a moment. Everyone watching online, just let's pray this simple prayer. Everyone out loud right now, repeat it after me. Oh God, I believe Jesus died on the cross. He went into the grave. He arose from the dead. I repent of my sins. I ask Jesus into my heart. And I thank you now. All my sins are forgiven. My past is forgiven. I now have a future. And I have no longer guilt in my life. I am free in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give it up for all of these and just stay here for a moment. I'm gonna ask all of you that are here to do me a big favor. We have a, we have a, quick, we have a quick thing we wanna do. We wanna get a Bible in your hand. We wanna get materials in your hand and it'll just take a minute. We'll make sure you're back out because we know you gotta get with family, but I'm gonna split this in half. So if you're part of this side, if you're a family, go with that side. I'm gonna split it in half. All of you, would you turn this way? And if you'll just follow, you'll see someone waving their hand over there. If you'll just follow them, don't leave, don't go somewhere, follow them. And the rest of us stay seated. We're not dismissed yet. And all of you on this side, would you turn this way and just look, there's someone waving over on this side. Would you follow them? And let's give them a big round of applause as they go. Thank you so much, all of you for coming up. And before we close out, I just wanna, I wanna remind you next week's sermon is so important. You need to hear what I'm gonna talk about. And this is what it's all about. I wanna thank all of you for inviting someone to come out to church and uh, seeing what Jesus did today. We have just one more thing we wanna do. We wanna sing a song. And um, as we sing this song, then Pastor Noah's gonna come up. He'll close the church uh, service out today. Thanks so much.
Thank you so much for coming and celebrating Easter with us. Hey, want to let you know if you had a friend or a family member that came down and answered that, that altar call, you can meet up with them. They'll either be outside the United Room or outside of our chapel here. They're just getting the Bible and the information in their hand. And hey, just want to remind you and let you know too about water baptisms coming up next Saturday. If you haven't taken that next step in your walk with God, we encourage you to do that. And the people that uh, raised their hand and gave their lives to Christ, they're, they're being informed about it as well. So if it's a family member or friend, encourage them to do that. Come out with them Saturday night after service next week. You can register for it on our website at myfaithfamily.com. And then, hey, if you came a little late to service and you missed out on the giving time and you're like, where's offering at? We did it already in the beginning, but you can give on the way out. There's a bucket in between the doors. You can drop your offering in that. And then if you're volunteered to schedule or you're scheduled to volunteer after service, you can go out and go to your position. And if you're a VIP, make sure you stop by the VIP areas at the edge of the staircases and, and hand in that green VIP card and get your free gift for visiting with us. Well, thanks for being with us. We'll see you guys next weekend. Enjoy your Easter Sunday. You're dismissed.